right, so here we are with a piece of watercolor paper and with some starting sketches on it. And again, I used the graphite paper, but you can do that freehand. A starting sketch to give you a sense of where you're going to put your image onto the paper. And what we are drawing, here's the fuller version of it, is a historic building in Douglas. This has been in use since the early 1800s, so before the Civil War even started, back in a time of just horses and carriages and walking around and lamps and candles and so on. And this building is still here, and it is set up as a historic general store, so you can see what it was like to live back then, what their stores would have been like. And it's a lot of fun that they've done all of this restoration to the building and that you can go visit it. This is my cat visiting again. Speaking of visiting, here I thought that the cat would be done for the morning. But apparently you're looking for the water to drink, or are you just coming to say hello? You're going to eat my brushes? You are so helpful to make sure the brushes are properly chewed before use. All right, sweetie. Come on, you can go over in the other room now. <laughs> That's exactly where I want to paint, as well you know. No, cables are not for chewing. Come on, sweetie. Whoa! No knocking over the tripod. <laughs> All right. So, the Ian Jinks store. <laughs> so we're going to now do a watercolor painting and let's see if I can find my pen that I use for the pen and ink part of this which should be already <laughs> so we're going to do a pen and ink watercolor painting of the E.N. Jenkins store in Douglas, which is a historic store, which has been there since the early 1820s, so before the Civil War. So I'm going to do the pen and ink with a Jelly Roll Sakura 06. This just happens to be the pens that were recommended to us when we did our Uxbridge sketch fests. And the reason to use this kind of pen, you don't need to use this particular pen, but you do want to use a waterproof pen because we're going to be watercolor painting on top of this pen and if this pen was not waterproof then the pen would smear and um, get black all over the image which is not what we are hoping to have happen so you want some sort of a pen which is waterproof so it does not react with the water when we start putting the water down onto this picture so I have started by making an image guidelines with graphite paper to give me a starting point for where these images are going to go. And the style that I'm going to do here is going to be a rough sketch style. So while I used a ruler to give me the starting images, just so I had the starting images set, I'm putting the ruler away. And I'm now going to do everything roughly in freehand to give that sense of being there on the spot and just sketching the image loosely and then painting it in. So if you want your image to be more precise, then you can certainly do that. You can continue to use rulers and continue to be very neat and precise about how you draw the lines. I'm going to be aiming for a different kind of effect, which will be a gentle, rough kind of sketch. So to start with, I'm going to use my... Here, I'll move the uh, watercolors away from it. And let's see if... This will stay in the frame. I'm going to use my photo as a guide point because remember I only drew in the basic shapes to give me guidelines, but I didn't draw in every single railing of the um, railing and I didn't draw every single pane in the glass and all of that sort of stuff. So I'm going to do that stuff freehand. All right, so I am. <laughs> doing this at an angle because the tripod is in here so I'm going to angle this to make it at least a little more reasonable for me to work with <laughs> as they work around the tripod. At some point maybe I should get this camera to hang from the ceiling so that I can 
get to things without going around the tripod, but right now I am wrapped around the tripod to try to do this. All right, so remember we are doing rough sketches. And we've got two rows in here. This is a little challenging because <laughs> I can't see what I'm doing. All right, we'll start from this side and we'll do it this way. All right, so we've got these that go all the way across the entire thing. Oh, and is this the pen that doesn't work? Hold on. <laughs> After all of that. That's all right. That's why we have multiple pens. I should mark that pen. <laughs> that is the dead one. I keep meaning people say that if you find a lighter and put the tip of a pen in the flame, that it will get the ink to reactivate. So I need to do that at some point, but I need to find a lighter because we really don't use lighters around here anymore. So it gives a starting point for the stair railing. And again, my aim here is to do a loose sketch, which is good because I am trying to see around a tripod <laughs> and draw around a tripod. So I'm having a challenge getting more than a rough sketch anyway. All right, then we got the basis of that. The bottom level of the store. There should be, I guess this next level I drew very faint. Try to do that. Really? All right, so then we got windows. So imagine that back then, windows and panes were sort of a special thing be able to buy glass. Before they had glass, back in colonial days, they just left their windows open and they had shutters. And nowadays we tend to think of shutters as being decorative things, but back then shutters were actually used to close up the windows at night or during rain or snow or so on, because otherwise the window was just wide open and bugs could fly in, birds could fly in. There's just a hole in the side of the house. So imagine what that might have been like. Got doors. Douglas has another claim to fame, which is really cool, especially if you watched the Hamilton Broadway production. And that is that General Lafayette rode through Douglas on the way to see George. My video says that it is paused. There it goes. All right, so um, what I was saying is that General Lafayette rode through Douglas on his way up to Boston to meet with General Washington, and that his horse needed changing at that point because the horse was tired so he got off his horse and he got on a new horse and kept on going. So if you were riding a long distance you had to map out where you were going to get your next horse. So a whole different way of thinking. All right we got the stairs coming down. And the minister of the stairs coming down. All right, then we got the railing. Let's put in the pillars first. That pillar here. And we got 
pillar over here in the middle of the door. We've got a pillar over here, on top of the stairs. And we've got the top of the porch coming across here. So again, this is just a rough sketch. Its purpose is to be rough. Got a window here. And a window here. And these windows have two vertical stripes. Three horizontal stripes. door over here. And little side windows. And then a window here. Okay, no kidding. Sweetie, please don't knock over the tripod. <laughs> Yes, you are so helpful. So, so helpful. You want to eat the pen? Why would you eat the pen? Yes, it's a pen. All right, sweetie. So I am now off of the paper. No, sweetie. No eating the cable. Come on, sweetie. Come over here. All right. So I've now done the key things which are shown on the paper. And it's time for me to start thinking about the things which are not shown on the paper. There, let me get the cat pen over here to pick it up. Alright, so now we're looking at this. So you can see in the original picture, they did actually have shutters on those windows up there. Because at the time, the shutters were <laughs> being used for an actual purpose, which is when storms came through and so on, they would close up to protect the precious glass. And you can see over here on the sides that they had shutters on these. And, and actually these shutters down here are closed. So you can see how they would function when they were closed and shut. They would fit very neatly right over the glass to protect it. So if we wanted to, we could then now draw in shutters to show historically what this would have looked like. Those shutters would go on behind there. Modern times we tend to think of shutters as decorative objects, but back then shutters were important parts of a house's protection. So we'll draw on the rest of this window, its shutters. And the 
house actually ended over here, so I made the lines a little too long. So we will deal with that later. We will end it here. And we would have another one of these columns. At the ending point. And then it had a pillar down here for the main support. Alright, then the roof has three chimneys. All right, let's see if we can see. This is going to go off the side of the paper, but that's okay. So we'll draw. And there, and then there'll be a bunch of stairs. Those. There aren't shutters on the lower ones. There is a frame around the door. The window. Second door. So there wasn't a second door in the actual original one, but that's okay. We did put it in at some point. We'll just assume that. We are drawing the version of when they had it put in. Right. Looks like there's another door over here. So let me put it over here. So you get a sense of how this process works. And the pain. And it's sort of shadowy over here to know what is happening in this section. Let me see if I can find a different picture. It looks like there's just more windows. Oh, no, actually in this picture it looks like there's another door. There's another door over here, so we'll just put... Again, it's pretty much over this door, so we'll put another door right here. It looks like there's also another column. We'll put it here. Alright, got a column, got a door. And then we need a roof. So if we got a front on view of the roof, it's just really going to go straight up. Probably to here. It's like a whole nother story because if you look in the side here, you can see the side windows and the triangle here. So, whole nother story worth of roof. And then the slope of the roof comes down. And they come down there. And then three chimneys. Chimneys were very important in those days because that's how they got their heat. 
the entire house, or in this case, the entire building, was heated by fireplaces. And if your room wasn't near a fireplace, then you froze. <laughs> you had lots of blankets piled on top of you, <laughs> or you went down and you slept by the fireplace. Alright. So we get a general sense of how to draw out with pencil, either through tracing paper or through freehand, the rough design, and then how to um, get the pen and ink to form a starting set of lines for you. So now we're going to work on the watercolor aspect of this. We got our watercolor. Put the water over here because you don't really need to see the water. The paint's over here. And put, oh, let's put this other image here as our starting point. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start by doing wet on wet. So for wet on wet, I'm going to use a bigger brush and I'm going to make an area of this area of the paper wet so that I could fill in color in a large way and a loose way. So I'm just going to choose a biggish brush. I'm going to get the brush wet, and we'll start with the uh, ground in front of the mill down here, which probably would have been brown because this is where the horses rode and the people walked and the wagons rode by and so on. So it probably wouldn't have been grassy. They didn't pave their streets back then with uh, asphalt. In some cities, they would pave them with cobblestone to try to keep the place from getting into giant dust clouds. But that wouldn't have been the type of thing that they would have done in Douglas. So it would have just been dirt. And it would have been worn down by all the horses and carriages riding past all the time. And that way it's a nice smooth surface for the horses to ride on. So we're going to choose a nice brown. So I made it wet with water. And now I'm adding in the brown, and since this area is wet, everywhere that's wet, this paint will spread out and merge and cover in sort of a loose, billowy sort of way. And that gives it a fairly even tone. So I like using wet on wet anywhere that you have that kind of not the main focus kind of feel to it. It's important to note that watercolors dry lighter than when you put them on. So whatever you put on, know that it's going to lighten. Most of the time when people do watercolor painting, they're thinking about layers. They're thinking about this just being the first layer, and they're sort of staining the paper a color. And then they'll do a second layer and a third layer to add in their shadows and so on. Since we're doing these reasonably quick as a sketch style, then we're not going to be thinking about layers. We're just thinking about putting down the different shades of color to give a sense of what is there. But if you wanted to turn this into a more complicated painting, then you certainly could do that. You could put down a layer, let it dry, put down another layer, put down another layer, and so on. And that helps you build up the particular style that you want and also build up darker colors. Alright, so I think we get the sense that there's a brown street out here in front before the start of the building itself. Alright, so the street is brown. The sky <laughs> tends to be blue. So I have these little rogue lines on the left. The thing about pen <laughs> is that pen is dark. We 
you can't really erase pen. And I'm just doing this as a rough sketch, so it doesn't matter. But here, we will just do a little bit of racing on here. You can see where the pencil would have erased right out. The pen just does not erase. So, that's all right. This is just a rough sketch. So now I am painting in with water where the sky is going to go. Now you don't want two wet areas of a watercolor to touch each other, so I wouldn't want to paint all the way down to this black area because watercolor paint gets drawn into areas that are wet. And if I touched this water area to that water area, the brown would all get drawn up to swirl around in this water area. And then as I'm adding my blue, the blue would all get drawn down to mingle and merge around in that brown watercolor area. So you want to think of watercolor areas as islands of color. And you generally want an area to be dry before you start working on an adjacent island. And again, the benefit of this wet on wet is that the colors will sort of swirl and will merge and then you'll get these little sense of clouds and other things in there without really having to do a lot of detailed work. And if you did detailed work, often it feels forced and static, where if you're just doing these kinds of painting in wet areas, the colors swirl very organically and it feels quite natural what they're doing. down not all the way down now what we could do <laughs> as I'm still staring at that areas down there where I drew over a little too far is I could do something there to mask it I can't paint over it with white because watercolor is a see-through kind of paint where you can see through to the previous layers so I wouldn't be able to paint dark enough there to hide those lines but what I can do and I'll let the blue paint dry a little first is I'll draw a tree in there and that way the movements of the tree will hide these little edge pieces and that will handle that issue fine all right so I've got the foreground with the road which is a dirt road and then I've got actually I'm looking at this and there should be a sign here that says Ian Jenkels store so we'll put in the block for the sign and give it a little hanging things and I think I put a little planter over here. I think got a planter here. That adds a nice little visual interest here. Maybe a little pile of flowers. And let's draw in the railings now. I'm giving the 
blue and the brown areas time to dry. Alright, and then the railing doesn't go all the way down to the ground or to the bottom of the porch. Goes down and has a gap in there. And again, when you're doing a sketch, you're just giving a sense of the scene. So it's not critical that every last little line be precise. You're just giving a rough idea of what this looks like. Sometimes sketches are used as a starting point. So you go to a scene, you sketch it for five minutes or ten minutes, and then you go back home and you do a more detailed painting. You go back home and you need to do a more detailed painting in oils or acrylics or something. But sometimes that sketch is a quick sense of the scene. And part of the fun of a sketch is it does have that quick loose feel to it. Sort of like you're riding by on a wagon and you just looked out your window as you went riding by the store and got a quick sense of it. You weren't absorbing all of its architectural detail. But you were getting an idea of what this place was. Alright, this roof is shingles. And you generally don't want to <laughs> draw in every last little shingle, especially when you're doing a sketch. But you would give a little sense that there's these little things. So again, don't think about being super precise with this. Just think about giving a sense that there's some sorts of gritty things going on in this roof. Alright, so the roof made up of shingles. Let's look back at the original. Yeah, so it was done in shingles back then too. And then the chimneys were brick. Right, so let's put that out. So then again with the chimneys, you don't want to sit there drawing every little brick in because this is a sketch. But you just give a sense that you've got some sort of texture in there that involves lines and little bricky shapes. Alright, so while the blue of the sky is drying, we're going to draw in her paint in the brown of the shingled roof. Should be a darker brown, sort of a brown gray. Yeah, that's a good enough brown for a shingle. And you can see because we didn't wait long enough that the ink didn't quite dry in the pen we we're using. So even though it is a waterproof ink, you have to give it a few seconds to dry. But part of sketching is that you're moving quick. So what this does is show the person who's looking at the drawing that you were doing this quick and on the moment. So it's another way for people when they look at a painting to get a sense of how it was made. And those kinds of little details can add to the way a person interprets your painting. So for example, if you look at sketches, they often have you going outside the lines. You know, you're a little over the line or, or so on. And that gives a sense that the person was moving quickly, that they weren't thinking about precise details, that they were just doing a quick relaxed sketch. So even if you have time with your sketch, it's a good practice to try going quickly and see what happens if you do something quickly. How does your painting change and what kind of energy does that give to the viewer?
and then another time you could try going really slowly and staying exactly in the lines and so on and you say what kind of uh, impression does that give to the viewer what, what kind of a sense do they have about how you were proceeding with your process all right so the roof now has shingles Alright, so let's look on the shutters. So this traditionally would have been white with probably black, is the way that many of these types of houses were done back then. So we got some black. I'm going to mix the black in a little with brown. In nature, few things are pure ebony black. Even when they painted things, the shutters would get weathered, And you'd see some of the wood beneath it. So rarely was it a pure jet black. It was generally blackish. And even if you look at things nowadays, when something is black, it's often black with a little shades of other things in there. So give thought to that. You know, that black isn't just one color in nature. There are all sorts of different shades of black. Some blacks are purpler. Sweetie. Alright, sweetie, now we're at the point of wet watercolors, and I don't want little watercolor footprints all over the house. You're a very good kitten. Kitten, I don't want you laying on the keyboard. Because <laughs> then you're going to type mysterious messages to people. But you are a very good kitten. Yes, you just lay there and think kitteny thoughts. So we got shutters. All right, in that picture, the doors were black too. So the doors. Black. And in the original one, they didn't have windows in the doors. They were just solid doors with panels. Alright, so we'll make these doors solid in a white frame. You're making this a little challenging. Now I have to paint around the tripod and around the kitten. That is all right. That is the nature of a challenge. All right. Door here. Door here. Right, and see how these shutters aren't precise? That actually adds to the sense of the sketching process. So that is fine to do. I'm going to put in the sign here nice and dark. Now normally in watercolors you paint light to dark. But the sense being that once you paint something dark, you can't really make it light anymore because watercolor colors layer and the darker colors cover up the lighter colors but we're going to paint the name on top of that with a pure white at the very end which will be able to sit on top of all the rest of these colors just a little darker when you're making a painting you want to think about darks and lights you want there to be a good range of light areas, and there's going to be a lot of light areas since this building is white. Medium areas, which are a lot of these, like the sky is a medium color and the 
brown of the ground. And then you want to have some darker color so that there's some visual interest for the eyeball. So we can make these shutters fairly dark by adding a couple of layers of paint to them. And that way the eye gets that range that it likes to see. So think about that when you're doing painting. Think about having areas that are light, medium, and dark. And think about where your eye is going to be drawn. Your eye doesn't tend to be drawn to medium shade things. It tends to be drawn to bright areas and dark areas. So try to construct your picture so that there are light areas and dark areas where you want the person's eye to be drawn to. Dark doors. Cat is watching every movement I'm making. <laughs> yes, you are so helpful. You are so helpful, kitty. It's hard to even describe how helpful it is to have you sitting right there watching everything I'm doing. I think the sky is dry enough that I can risk working on the chimneys. It should be a reddish color. I'll try this color here. It's a little purple. So I'll put that down as a first layer. Add some of this red in. There we go. And again, the idea is to do this roughly, because this is supposed to be a sketch. So it's good to have a little bit of things going outside the lines and things being a little loose, because it adds to that sketch feel of it. Alright, maybe a little orangier. So the beauty of watercolors is that these colors all merge and blend together. There we go. Kitten? Yes, you're a very good kitten. I'm going to chew on the end of the brush. Yes, that is so helpful. So, so helpful. All right, so we got chimneys. And while we're at it, let's put a little brown in for this pot. Because that's then going to have to dry before we can put in the color of the flowers. Alright, the stairs were white, but the banister is brown, so part of what you can do is just go right over the pen line and add a little hint of color. So it's not even like you're painting inside the pen, you're just adding little dashes of color and you can little add little dashes of color to the top of the stairs. So again with the sketch you're just giving a sense of it and <laughs> for sketches usually you take just five or ten minutes so we're taking quite a lot of time on the sketch so you can see how it works but normally you just be going swish 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 with your pen doing some quick sketch lines and then with your watercolors just doing swish 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 adding some little quick colors in there to get a sense of what the colors are so 
we are going slowly so you get a sense of how this all works but sketching is a quick, casual, fun <laughs> process. All right, so what other colors would be in here? I suppose the windows generally aren't white. Windows are generally dark. Let's see what kind of a dark this is. Right, that's a little too blue, but if we mix that in with this black, then we get a much better blue black which is much more likely to be the color of a window. That's a windowy color. We're probably reflecting the blue of the sky but also the darkness of the interior of the store. So in here, you can see there's a little run in from the shutter and from the sign because I'm painting things that are still wet next to each other and the wet areas are running into each other. And I don't mind doing that here because the colors are similar enough that it doesn't matter. It can also sort of be the reflection of those things, the reflection of the sign in the window and so on. And also it give that sense again that this is a quick sketch. If we are too careful and precise then it starts to look like a detailed drawing which is not the style I'm going for. I'm going for this quick sketch style. So the kinds of things like that uh, give the sense to the watcher that this was all done quickly, it was done while things were still wet, and that is okay. Alright, so what else have we got? We got chimneys, got the shingles, we got the columns are white, we got the railing is white, we got the doors that are black, windows that are darkish blue. Maybe a little darker blue. The more paint you add, the darker in general it gets because a lot of the light in a watercolor painting is the light of the room going through the paint bouncing off the white paper and coming back out at your eyes again. So the more layers of paint you put on there the more you're blocking the light from getting to the paper and bouncing back so it gets darker and darker. And again, keep in mind that we've got all this white from the building, so we want to have some darker areas so that we have a nice range of light to dark in our finished painting. But <laughs> again, on the other side, the aim is to, to do a quick sketch, so we don't want to spend lots and lots of time on all these details because the aim is to give an idea of a quick sketch that someone did just to give a sense of what this place was all about. Alright, so let's do the tree because this area over here should be pretty dry and I want to do that flower but that brown is still pretty wet and if we did the flowers right now then the brown from the pot would go right up into the flowers and while we want this to be a sketch I also want that to be fairly accurate so I will Put it in there and say that there was a little bit of extension there for the like stairs up or something like that. And then you will say that behind here, behind that thing, there's a tree. Alright, 
So now if we use a nice dark brown. So there wasn't a tree in the original painting, but you know, arts, artists can do whatever they want to to add some artistic license to a scene. Now there's a tree to add some interest and some additional color. There's a green in there. Now it's a little less obvious that we went a little too far over on this side with my lines, with my initial drawing. And I'm just putting in a couple of different greens to give it that actual tree sense. And if you just have one green in your palette, then that's fine, because you can just mix in a little yellow sometimes and a little red and other colors. So now we got a tree. Now it's a little less obvious that we had extra lines in there. There's always a way to deal with <laughs> challenges like that that you might face. Alright, and let's put in a little pop of, <clears throat> what do we think, orange? So I would have to wait probably 20 minutes or so for this <coughs> sorry for this sign area to dry completely before I then paint it in with a pure white. So I have this Dr. PH Martin's bleed proof white, which is a nice solid white that'll sit on top of all the other colors. And then I could put the store name in there and that would stand out clearly against that black background to be able to put the sign name in there. And that way there's a nice black background for it and then the letters will stand out nice and clear. But other than that, I think we have all the colors in place that were in place in the actual store. And we could, you know, sketch in a little bench or other kinds of things if we wanted to. But that gives the gist of the idea of it. I'm trying to think. There might be a little bit of a... The scene, <laughs> now, we're, now we're getting into the nitpicking stage. And when you're sketching, you're trying not to do every last little detail. But I will put it in just so we have a little time. It looks like there's a little bead of color right along the top of the railing here. Or not the railing, the top of the uh, floor of the porch. There we go. And I suppose there's probably also a bead of color along the top of the floor here. And as I said, the uh, challenge with sketching is to know when to say, all right, I've put in enough for the sketch, and now I'm getting into the realm of <laughs> over-sketching. All right, so... This would serve its purpose as a sketch. You've got the shapes down, you've got a sense of the colors down, 
And now you could go back to your studio if you wanted to, and you could use this as a starting point for a more detailed oil painting or acrylic painting. Or you could just keep this as a sketch to remember your visit to this place. But in general, sketches are meant to be quick and loose to give you a sense of the details of it without putting in every single last railing exactly where that railing was, give a sense of the colors that are there, and you would sketch something rather than take a picture because you know maybe you weren't able to get a full image. Maybe the reason that this image is just so close up is that there's other trees and things in the way now or that you couldn't stand back far enough because of other buildings or streets or all that other kind of stuff. So by doing a sketch you're able to use artistic license. You can add in trees, you can expend things where you aren't able to necessarily take their picture properly, and also it's just good practice as an artist to be able to do a quick sketch and get a sense of shapes and lines and proportions to each other. So ask if you have any questions about doing a pen and ink sketch and what they're all about and how you should just relax and have fun with them. <laughs> <laughs>